Yo, 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 it's your boy West the Tech here to bring you another one of my personal favorite tech tips to help you as an artist grow in your craft. Now, today we're gonna go over TuneCore and why I believe that it is not worth it for music distribution, all right? So if you're a recording artist who's possibly considering using TuneCore as your music distribution service, then this is the perfect video for you. Because in this video, I'm going to go over a few things that you may not know when it comes to TuneCore as a music distribution company, all right? Now, before I continue, I definitely want to let you guys know about my free music business tool or music business checklist that's available on my website right now, all right? This tool is essentially for any one of you who is looking into starting your own music business and you don't exactly know where to start, all right? With this tool, it'll show you actually three things that you could do right away, the first three things that you could do to in fact start your own music business, all right? So if you want more information on that, definitely click on the link above. I'll also leave the link in the descriptions below, all right? Now, also, I definitely want to give a big, big shout out to my brother, Victor Cornelis, all right? He's a dope, dope hip-hop artist, all right? He's a Christian hip-hop artist just like myself, all right? And the reason I was able to find out all of this information when it comes to the back end of TuneCore is because he actually has TuneCore, and obviously he's leaving TuneCore for a lot of the reasons that we're going to talk about today, all right? Now, first and foremost, when it comes to me as a as an artist, my preferred music distribution company is DistroKid. All right, so anytime I'm comparing another distribution company, I'm always gonna compare it to DistroKid because I have yet to find a distribution company that can compare to DistroKid as far as what it offers for you as an artist, how much it is, and all of the different perks that's associated with it, all right? So when it came to TuneCore, Victor really provided me an opportunity to actually take a look at what goes on behind the scenes in TuneCore, how their accounts look, how does it look when you log in, all of the different things that you can do as an account holder for TuneCore, all right? And this video, I'm basically just gonna go over those things and also express why I feel like, again, I don't think it's the best fit for independent artists, especially right now, all right? So first and foremost, okay, when it comes to TuneCore, we could say right out the jump, DistroKid blows it out the water when it comes to utility. It blows it out the water when it comes to just perks and all the different things that you can do when you actually have a DistroKid account versus a TuneCore account, all right? Some of those things, just to let you know, and of course, these aren't things like, you know, Apple Music for Artists, Spotify for Artists, you know, those things kind of come standard with music distribution companies, all right? Those are part of it. I'm talking about the things that's specific that really DistroKid only has versus everything else, all right? One of those things is obviously the YouTube, not YouTube content ID, but the official artist page and the way you're actually able to connect your official artist page. It's much, much easier to do it through DistroKid than it is to do it through TuneCore. TuneCore, you have to go through some other things. You got to submit some things. And it's very, very annoying in order to get your official artist paid. With DistroKid, it's very, very easy. All you got to do is go into the menu and get that situated. Also, with DistroKid, you have things like the Fixer tool, which is a very easy tool to help you add or remove songs that shouldn't be on your playlist that or shouldn't be on your profile that's on your profile or songs that are missing from your profile. DistroKid really makes it very, very easy to do those corrections no matter what streaming service that you have the issue with. TuneCore does not have that capability, doesn't have those things. With TuneCore, you actually have to contact them directly to get certain things fixed and this, that, and a third, all right? So just off of the perks and the benefits and all the utilities that DistroKid has, TuneCore is fails, fails in comparison to it, all right? Now, the next big thing is, of course, when we're dealing with the prices with the two different types of plans, all right? Last week, I went over their pay per release plan and how I thought that that was a very, very horrible plan. It's one of the worst plans when, you come to, when it comes to music distribution because with that plan, you literally have to pay $10 every time you release a single and $30 every time you release an album. And that amount is charged to you annually, which means if you release five singles in one year, that's $50. And then the following year, you got to pay $50 again. The following year, you got to pay $50 again, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, and that's only if you don't release any more music. The more music you release, the more you have to pay per year to keep those, music, to keep those songs up, which makes TuneCore very, very, very expensive 
especially when you're comparing it to distro kids you know um just subscription plan where you pay 39.99 and you could release as much songs as you want all right now i believe this is the reason why tunecore decided to make a subscription plan just like distro kid and they actually made a plan that's actually cheaper than distro kid because their rising artist plan is only 15 dollars versus distro kids musician plan which is 39.99 all right the reason i compare these two is because the distro kid 39.99 plan is the all is the it's the cheapest plan that you could get that you could actually schedule your own release date with TuneCore, you can schedule your own release date with the $14.99 plan, the Rising Star plan. And I believe that's very, very important as an independent artist to be able to control exactly when your music is released. So at face value, TuneCore seems better because it's cheaper, right? When you're just looking at the prices alone, TuneCore looks better because it's cheaper. But when you have access to both of them and you could actually look at them behind the scenes and see how they operate, how they work, this show kid is much, much better. It's worth it even if it was three times as much as TuneCore. I just don't believe in TuneCore as a music distribution company because it's missing a lot of things and there are some things that is very, very difficult to do, all right? Now, the biggest issue in where TuneCore like fails to comparison when it comes to other music distribution companies is when your music is actually taken down, all right? Now, the reasons your music can be taken down is obviously if you can't pay it, they're going to take down all your music. It is what it is, all right? Whether it's the subscription plan or it's the pay per release plan, the moment you stop paying them, they will take down all your music, all right? Which is kind of obvious, all right? They provide you the service to get your music on streaming services. If you can't pay it, they take it down. I get it, but that's not all that they do, all right? And this is really the focus of this video because this is really some things that I noticed that I really, really didn't like, all right? So first and foremost, TuneCore likes to talk about how they generate you an ISRC code, all right? For those of you who don't know what that is, you can click on the link above. I explain it further in that video, but essentially it's the barcode to your music. It's how your music is able to be identified, all right? What happens is when they give you this code, if for any reason your music is taken down, they actually take that code back, all right? What that means is, is that if you ever wanted to release that song again, even if you wanted to release it through TuneCore, you would have to be issued out a new ISRC code, which means that whatever stream count, whatever place that you had attached to that first code is absolutely gone. The moment it's taken down, you literally have to start over if you wanted to re-release the song through TuneCore or any other music distribution company. That's one of the biggest important things about the ISRC code. When you have that code, your streams and everything is attached to that when it comes to the streaming services. So if you want to transfer from TuneCore to DistroKid, all you got to do is get the ISRC code. As long as it's still active, you just transfer that code and put it in DistroKid. But since TuneCore takes it away from you, you're unable to do that and you literally would have to start from scratch. Which means that if for any reason you have TuneCore now and you want to switch to another distribution company, you're going to lose all your stream accounts, period. You know, And that's one of those things that I noticed in TuneCore. I'm like, man, that's crazy that they do that because a lot of other music distribution companies don't do that. But TuneCore absolutely does. And that's something that you won't see right away. You'll only be able to see that obviously through the back door. All right. Now, if you don't believe me, Here's an image of one of the songs that's taken that was taken down by Victor Cornelius, by the, my friend, right? Now, obviously, I have to black down the important information, but if you can see, there's no place that it actually shows the ISRC code. When your song is actually active, your, ISR, your ISRC code should show up here. As you can see, there's nothing showing here. That's because it's taken down. That is because it is removed, all right? But trust me, it gets worse, all right? This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all the different things that I found out. Honestly, I'm not gonna go over everything, but I'm gonna go over the things that stung the most to me. The ISRC code is definitely one of them, especially for those of you who may think to get TuneCore and switch to something else, they pretty much lock you in. They're like, either you stay with us or you lose all your stream accounts, all right? For me, it's worth losing the stream accounts than to stay with them. So if you're if they're holding you hostage just because of your plays, your counts, leave them. Trust me, it's not worth it. It's not worth it, all right? Now, another big issue that I noticed when it came to them taking down the music, especially in Victor's case specifically, they left the YouTube content ID up. And it's weird because the YouTube content ID is no longer active. But if you go to his YouTube official artist channel, those songs are still connected to his YouTube channel. 
It's inactive, which means he's not going to collect any revenue from it. But the songs are still showing up on his YouTube channel. The issue with this is, is that these songs, he no longer want them on his official artist channel on YouTube. But there's no way that he can get them off. Right. The only way we have found to try to get them off is literally to contact them to d directly. All right. And this is where the other issue lies to me, because I'm like, OK, if they take it down anyway, why? And you're not getting paid off for of YouTube content ID. Why cannot you? Why you can't just disconnect the official artist channel? You can do it with Distro Kid. You can literally go in Distro Kid, go into the menu and disconnect your YouTube artist channel to your music district to your district kid account you cannot do that with TuneCore for some reason it's just once it's active it's active and it won't get off of there so he has music on his youtube channel right now that he no longer wants there because he's no longer collecting content id revenue from it but he can't do it and the only way that we could get this solved is by contacting them and this where like the final blow hit at least for me when it came to TuneCore is that when you actually need to contact them, there's no quick way to do it. You actually have to submit a request form. So that means if you if you want to maybe try to get your ISRC code back, you got to submit a request form to speak to them. If his situation, Victor's situation, he has to submit a request form. But get, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Their response time is based off of the plan that you have. That is absolutely ridiculous ridiculous to me as small as that sound that is absolutely crazy to me which means that if i have the free plan i have to wait five days if i have the most expensive plan i only have to wait one day so the customer's support as far as their response time is based off of how much you're paying them a month that is absolutely ridiculous i don't know how i, I don't know any company that does that if you are with the company whatever whatever plan you have with the company you call customer service you're going to get somebody they don't they don't give special treatment to the, those who are paying more right it doesn't matter what plan you have with t-mobile if you need to contact them you get somebody on the line you get somebody in a chat group or something to no 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 it all depends on what plan you had and to me that was just the last slap in the face especially for this particular situation when you're talking about the youtube content id and actually taking the song down all right it's been a mess obviously we're still trying to get it figured out and everything like that but these are some of the things that people don't see right away when it comes to tunecore people don't know right away when it comes to tunecore all they see is their flashy new price of the 14.99 right but when you consider what they actually offer in the as far as their services when you actually see the type of headache that you will go through in case your music is ever taken down or in case you want to leave them because you're not satisfied with them there's no point of even tempt, attempting to even deal with them it's a lose lose it's like you can't be like okay i'm gonna try it out and if i don't like it i'm gonna leave it's not that easy right and if you don't have it at all, there's no point to have it because you know all of these issues that already arise from the very, very beginning. So all they're trying to do is they're trying to get you in with this $14.99 price, all right? And they have you locked into these weird situations that you kind of can't get out of unless you're willing to sacrifice something major like your play count, all right? But of course, at the end of the day, it's all up to you guys. Maybe there's maybe for those of you who do like TuneCore and love TuneCore and swear by it, please leave comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you like about it. Let me know if the information I'm saying is incorrect. I doubt it is because we literally was working on it all day long trying to fix some of these things, but these issues are very, very real. And I've seen other comments of other people having those same issues as well. But if there's something that I don't know, please leave comments in the comment section below. Maybe there's more to it than what I'm saying right if there's perks that i couldn't find maybe they're in a certain location we went through their whole platform i literally went through the back door of it checked out everything and someone as someone who had distro kid for as long as i have had it it's not even close it's not even close distro kid blows tunecore out the water even at the extra cost is way way more uh, it's, it's more it's worth it more to go with distro kid even though you're paying more because you just have more stuff and you don't have to deal with all those headaches that you may have to deal with with TuneCore if for any reason you decide to change your mind and go with another music distribution company, all right? But that's pretty much it. This isn't really, you know, a TuneCore hate video. This is really just me 
just giving you the facts, letting you guys know what you may be in for if you ever do decide to go with TuneCore. All right, let you know what current customers are dealing with with TuneCore and all of those different things so that you can make a full educated decision when it comes to which music distribution company is right for you. Now, of course, I'm not I'm not promoting DistroKid and telling you to go with DistroKid. I just know DistroKid. I've been using DistroKid for a long time. And for me, it seems like the best one. The only distribution company that I see comes close to it recently, at least in recent years, is Symphonic. They have a really, really great distribution company as well. And I've seen their back office. I've seen their dashboards and things like that. They offer a lot of things as well, just like DistroKid. And they have a few things that are specific to them as well. So they're really the only ones that I could compare to DistroKid right now. But TuneCore is way, way on the bottom of the list when it comes to that. But again, if you just want something cheap and you want to get your music out and you don't care about all of the other headache, go for it. Because, you know, $14.99, $15 a year to release as much music as you want, it's a great deal. But just know that you do have those other things that you have to consider in the long run, all right? But that's pretty much it. That's what this video is about. This video is literally about me just explaining why I don't think TuneCore is worth it. But again, it's my opinion. You're all obviously allowed to formulate your opinions on TuneCore as well, all right? But that's pretty much it. For those of you guys who are looking into starting your own music business, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, and you don't exactly know where to go about that, you don't exactly know where to start, and you want to know exactly how to put your position, put yourself in a position to leave that nine to five job, so that you can do music full time like myself. I strongly, strongly urge you to grab my ebook here, The 13 Steps to Jumpstart Your Music Business. In this ebook, it'll show you everything that you need to do to put yourself in a position to leave that nine to five, all right? But again, if you guys have any additional comments or concerns in regards to anything, TuneCore, DistroKid, music distribution, music in general, the music industry, whatever, leave comments in the comment section below. I'm here to help you out as an independent artist, all right? But that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Joseph, Big Joseph, Joseph. Yeah. can't nobody break.